I'm Mia Friedman, and this is a special episode of No Filter, brought to you by the Mamma Mia Podcast Network. And we're popping unexpectedly into your feed during a completely crazy week in Canberra, where, much to the surprise of pretty much everybody, we have a new Prime Minister, and Malcolm Turnbull is leaving politics. I wanted to take this opportunity to play some of the interview that I did with Malcolm last year. Because on a day when some people are saying Malcolm has lost everything, I thought it was worth just pointing out that he actually hasn't. Because more than pretty much any politician I've ever interviewed, Malcolm Turnbull has the most extraordinary partnership and marriage with his wife, Lucy. They've been together for decades. They have two children of their own and several grandchildren. And she was there by his side as he delivered his farewell speech in the courtyard of Parliament House. She was fighting back tears, but you could really sense the bond between them just as you could every time he spoke about her. He just, his face would light up in a way that you generally don't see among people who've been married for decades. Anyway, you can hear the full original interview if you follow the link in the show notes, but I wanted to just highlight this particular portion of the interview. Here's Malcolm Turnbull. Malcolm, good, good to, to be, be with you. you. Yeah, good great. to see you. You mentioned Lucy and I wanted to ask you about her. You know, Cheryl Sandberg said the most important career decision a woman will make is the partner she chooses. Mm. You and That's, Lucy... That goes for men too, by the way. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> and and as Annabelle says, women need wives and men need lives. But, um, <laughs> you know, Lucy's had a phenomenal career. She yep. was the, the mayor of Sydney and she's mm-hmm. been a, a, a star as much as you have. Have you had to make any sacrifices for her? Have you both sort of leaned in and out? You had, you know, when you were rising through the ranks, you had young children. Yeah. How do we, you guys we, work we, it well, out? We've always supported each other. It's Seems been, like that. Yeah, it's been a good partnership and we have, each of us have compromised uh, to support the other. Mm. Um, you know, I, look, I would have to say, I think Lucy's probably compromised more to support me than me, mm-hmm. her. But there have been choices in our, in, in our lives where I've made decision I've, you know I've compromised in the sense of, of, of making decisions that were focused on supporting her mm-hmm. and uh, and it is but but you know Luce and I are very close and I have and, and I know <laughs> we've been together for a very very long time you know we'll be shortly celebrating our 37th wedding anniversary and we were together for a few years before that so so 40 years odd uh yeah it's getting close more to more than half years. your life uh quite a lot more yeah. than half my life i'm not 80. <laughs> so, i'm not good at maths no, so well, well, well we got we met when i was How did you uh, meet? we i uh, was oh, so, so, it's just not far from here lucy's dad uh tom hughes uh, was then uh, a QC. He still is a QC, but he was the he was one of the leading, if not the leading, barristers, trial mm. lawyers. And um, I was a young journalist at the Bulletin, and I was writing a story about him. So I went down to see, interviewed this very scary person. How old were you? Oh, 22, something oh, like that. Yeah, yeah, 22 or around that. 22, maybe a bit older. 22, actually, I was 22. And I went down to see Tom, and. Um, and to interview him, and uh, I, I spoke to him, and Lucy was a law student, she was 19, and she was working in his chambers doing some noting up, you mm-hmm. know, of law reports and generally earning a bit of, you know, money during the, mm. uh, during the holidays, I guess. So I, I, I spoke to her and I was totally entranced and I interviewed the great man, and uh, subsequently I mm. sent her a bunch of flowers to her father's chambers. Ah, smooth. She was not there, however, <laughs> and her dad came home because Lucy was living with her father. He was, he'd was he been divorced and she was basically looking after him. Mm. Uh, and uh, she he came home with a bunch of flowers and said to Lucy, uh, you know, that Malcolm Turnbull's a very charming young man. He was so appreciative of the time I gave him for the interview, <laughs> he sent me this bunch of flowers. <laughs> so Lucy, of course, said... Let me have a look at the flowers. <laughs> she said they're he for genuinely me. thought they were for him. Well, that's certainly Who knows? the impression yeah, he yeah, created, yeah, yeah. you know. No, that's and so the and that is how that is how we met. Now Tom forgave me after some years for not uh, sending him sending flowers. Sending him flowers. Can but you imagine as a journalist, junior journalist at the Bulletin, if you'd have sent him flowers, that in itself would have been hilarious. Yeah, well anyway. So it worked. So you guys started worked. dating that yeah, we started, early. We started yes, we started dating and we and then she came over to um, she came over to uh, visit me in 
at Oxford in 19, uh, end of, actually end of 1979. Mm. And, um, and we got married in March 1980 because I persuaded her to stay. Uh, and, uh, and in fact, you know, that's a good example. Lucy missed out on a law, year of law school. She shouldn't have, but mm. the law school were pretty unreasonable, I thought. And so we went back to Australia earlier than we otherwise would have so that she could finish law school. You know, mm. that was a good example of the way we've worked together. But getting married was, was, was a funny story too. So we went along to see the... Uh, we're living in this little cottage just outside Oxford. Mm. A little how old are you now? And you, how long have uh, you been I dating was, So this is, this is uh, 1980, so I'm now 25, and Lucy is 21. Oh, she's nearly so 22. She's, very, just, she's eight days short of 22. God. So she always says she should, if she'd waited nine days, she could have she been married be at 22, 22 instead of 21. 21 sounds very young. Like it if, does. If Daisy got married at 21, <clears throat> you would have been a bit like, are you sure? Well, she, well it, she, she chose a wonderful man. So, she did. No, uh, but still 21 seems young, 21 right? is young These days. By, by today's standards. Anyway, so we go along and we see the, the, uh, the it's an Anglican church there, Church of England church in the village. We go along and see the, the priest and... Uh, he asked what religion we are, and, mm. and Lucy said, well, she's a Catholic. I said, I'm a Presbyterian. And uh, he said, well, neither of you are members of my <laughs> church. Why, why, I go to the registry office. It's got nothing to do with me. <laughs> and I, so I said to him, uh, I said, look, the Church of England is an established church in the United Kingdom. Isn't that right? And he said, yes, it is. I said, so you are effectively a public servant? And he said, yes. I said, now you have a constitutional duty to prevent fornication in your parish. And Miss Hughes and I are making no admissions, but we are young and in very good health and sorely tempted. And so you have the opportunity mm. to marry us and put everything to right. And he thought that was so it's funny. Very good argument. He's so funny, he agreed to marry That's us. Fantastic. And years later, years later, <laughs> the, the, the tail end of that, the footnote to that story, is when the kids were about, Alex would have been about 12 and Daisy would have been 10, and we're in the UK, and they wanted to see where mum and dad had got married. And so we were up in that part of the country, so mm. we went and showed them this little church, and who was there <gasps> but the old priest. And he was so thrilled to see us. Oh, so, and she should have said, look, lucky you stopped the fornication, but here are the but, children. Well, we, no, we made no admissions. No we were admissions. both lawyers. No, it's no true. admissions. It's true, both lawyers. No admissions, but we did concede we were in good health. Until and so you met him tempted. again and he yeah, felt yeah. proud of his yeah, handiwork. Yeah, Neil Durand was his name. Yeah, very nice man. Um, my last question is about that. You know, being Prime Minister is a commitment for the two of you, I imagine. Um, yeah. You know, how do you, not how do you keep it fresh, but do you have date nights? We do, we do. Do you? It's, a, it's a very important... Just you and the Secret Service. It's very, <laughs> it's very important... One of the keys to a happy marriage is making time for each other. Mm. Relationships, you've got to keep investing time into them. It's really important. It's very easy uh, because of Especially the demands of work years. and children. Yeah, you've just got to keep on, you know, the, the ideal is to be each other's best friend. And that is, mm. that is absolutely, Lucy and I are each other's best friend. In fact, I have a, um, a much stronger sense of Lucy and me than I do of me. You know, very much... I see, we see each other as being uh, part partner. of a, as, uh, yeah, as part partners, of a whole. Part of a whole, yeah, that's right. And how do you stop it from being all about you now that you're the Prime Minister? Like everywhere you go, everyone is Mr. Prime Minister and everything. Yeah. So how do you, well, Lucy, do you have to? Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, can I tell you that Lucy's, we, well, Lucy and I have a lot of things in common that we talk about, nat mm. you know, naturally our children and grandchildren, of course. But Lucy's the Chief Commissioner of the Greater Sydney Commission, so mm. she's responsible for um, the putting together the big city plans, metropolitan mm. plans. Cities and planning is a big uh, priority for my government. Uh, so we have our city deals. We you have, have our those things housing in affordability uh, agenda. We have a whole infrastructure agenda. So, you know, we, we've got a lot to talk about and we've both got a lot of interests, uh, which, you know, beyond family. Mm. So, so we, we're never short of things to discuss. On date night. How On often do you do night. date night? Well, often date night is just not, to not like tonight. It's just a night at home. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the best good. place. Well, enjoy tonight. Thank you so much for making Thanks, the time. Thanks, Mia. It's great to be with you. If you want to hear more of this interview, you can hear the full version by following the link in the show notes. I will see you next week when, who knows, who will be our Prime Minister?